glory to God. Hi, I'm Pastor Reginald Gibson of Word of Faith uh, Global Ministries, as well as uh, Gibson Global Ministries, and I'm your host today for uh, End Time Insights, Past, Present, and Future. And so we're going to continue moving on in the book of Revelation today. Last week, we got into Revelations chapter 9. And we begin to talk about the the woes, the three woes, which uh, are taking place as the angels are blowing the trumpets. And uh, we left off talking about the second woe, which was the great Oriental or Asian army that is going to move across the across the, the global scene into the area of Jerusalem actually to the area of uh, the Valley of Elah for the Battle of Armageddon. And so I didn't get a chance to finish all that, so I'm going to go back and recap that and, and bring Chapter 9 to a close today. Praise the Lord. So, but before we do that, let's go over to Daniel Chapter 11, and we're going to take a look at verse 44, because verse 44 really kind of sets up uh, what it is that we're going to be looking at here in Revelations chapter 9, as well as Revelations chapter 16. Now, in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 44, it says, But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Him is referring to the Antichrist. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Now, the Antichrist as you know from our uh, teaching on the Antichrist weeks ago, is a man of war, even though he, he calls for peace, he is constantly making war. And by the time that these events take place, we're at the mid-tribulation point. Understand that he has at this point broken the deal that he has made with uh, the nation of Israel. He has moved into the, uh, into the city of Jerusalem, set himself up in the temple, and proclaimed himself God. Now, I know that many uh, people tend to believe that the Antichrist is going to rule the world. Not. He is not going to rule the world. As a matter of fact, his attempt, he's going to attempt to do it. But he's going to have big problems because of a few things that are taking place in the earth. First of all, there are going to be two witnesses that God is going to raise up after the 144,000 have been taken out of the way, have been, have been raptured out of the earth, he, God is going to raise up two witnesses, and these two witnesses will speak against the Antichrist and cause him all kinds of problems. Secondly, it's going to be this vast Oriental army that is going to move against him. Now, they're probably going to be very upset in this vast Oriental army. You're talking about China and maybe some other Asian nations along with them. And I'll set that up in just a moment. But they're going to be pretty upset when the Antichrist goes into the temple and proclaims himself God and wants everybody on the planet to worship him. Well, the Chinese army and the Chinese uh, are not going to have it. Okay, They have their own designs on world domination. So they're not going to buy into the Antichrist. And because of that, Voila, there's not going to be any world domination of the Antichrist. Even though the system is going to be in place to do it, he's not going to be able to carry it out. As a matter of fact, that system is being set up right now, even as we speak. There are things that are taking place in the earth with, with uh, artificial intelligence, AI, uh, smartphones, uh, internet, and all these different types of things are setting up the infrastructure for the Antichrist to come on the scene. Even this pandemic that many people are dealing with, uh, this pandemic is part of the plan in order to bring people into uh, submission and bring them into a position to actually receive the mark of the beast. This, you know, these mandates and these uh, different uh, things that are, they're trying to tell you to take and the jab, get the jab, get the shot and all that. That's not the mark of the beast, but it is conditioning people to be in a position so that they will take the mark of the beast once uh, the Antichrist comes on the scene and the false prophets, uh, which we haven't talked about yet, introduces 
the mark of the beast, okay? The Antichrist doesn't introduce it. It is the false prophet who brings that onto the scene. So we see here that he is troubled in Daniel chapter 11. There are problems because he's having a problem getting his world plan together, okay? He's getting tidings from the east that trouble him. Okay, that means that these are things that he does not want to hear about. But I believe what is going to happen is that it's going to spark his 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 uh, declaration that he is God is going to set in motion what we're about to read here in Revelations chapter nine and in Revelations chapter sixteen. So let's go over to Revelations chapter nine. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Okay. We're going to start here at verse uh, 15. It says, And four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. So we see here that a third part of men are going to be slain, are going to die, as this, uh, over this course of this one year, this uh one month, one week, one day. And notice it starts out by saying an hour. And I'll just tell you this from the beginning. This is the actual uh, beginning of the events that lead up to the Battle of Armageddon, which many people uh, think is coming soon. No, the Battle of Armageddon is, takes place on the very last day of the last seven years, okay? The last day of the last seven years is when the Battle of Armageddon takes place. And this is a battle in which the Antichrist forces, which we read in, in Daniel already, that he is gathering his forces to go forth to slay and to kill. We just looked at it in Daniel 11 and 44. And this vast Oriental army led by China probably is going to include uh, the Koreas and Japan, and things of that nature. Keep in mind that the, all the believers are taken out of the earth. So what you have left on the planet are unbelievers, okay? People who did not receive Jesus Christ, okay? And there may be some, in man's standards, some good people there who are going to be trying to live through this carnage. They're going to be trying to hide out. You have today people who are called survivalists, and they are uh, purchasing food, cases of food, and and weapons and things of that nature and building underground shelters. We're going to have people doing that kind of thing all over the place. We're going to try to live through this last seven year period. And many of them will actually live through it. And we will look at that as we move forward. Okay. So we see here that these tidings from the east and from the north, it says, from the east and from the north, mainly from the east, is going to bring together this vast oriental army that is going to move across land. Let's read. And it says that they are prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. Now, it's going to take them 13 months and one day to reach the destination in the Valley of Elah or Elia for the Battle of Armageddon just outside Jerusalem. There's this huge expanse of land, and this land is large enough to hold two sets, listen to me, two sets of 200 million men armies, including their weapons and their tanks and what have you, okay? So the Antichrist is bringing together his army, and this army of Asians or Orientals coming out of China and, and will come across land. This is a mechanized army, okay? And I have, a, there is a possible route, a probable route that they will take because of the description of what's going to take place as they move across going to this Valley of Elah just outside of Jerusalem for this last day battle, the Battle of Armageddon. It says here in, again, in verse 15, and the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen was 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. Now this number is two, in our term, terms, is 200 million men. 
So you have a 200 million man army, including all of the weapons and mechanization and tanks and whatever it is that they're taking that you can take across land. This is not an air force. Okay, we saw a description of Air Force when we looked at World War III with Russia, Iran, and Turkey attacked Jerusalem, attacked Israel. We saw the description of an Air Force in that, okay? We see here that we don't have that same description. We have the description starting in verse 17, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Now, keep in mind that John is trying to describe something that he has no reference for in his time frame. They don't have tanks. They don't have cars. They don't have uh, weapons, which uh, they don't have guns. Okay, so they don't have these types of weapons that spit forth fire. And I'm, I don't know if you've ever seen or maybe some of you have actually been in a, a military firefight or have seen one or seen film of one that uh, it appears that it's just like like shards or balls or, or streams of fire just coming out of those weapons, okay? And when you have the type of weapons that they have in today's armies, you can see how John is trying to describe what it is he is seeing as he is telling us and giving us this very descriptive account. Again, I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and of brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And these three were the third, and by these three were the third part of men killed by fire and by smoke and by brimstone which is issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. There are weapons and, uh, and, and tanks and things of that nature. You have turrets on some of these weapons in which they can turn in different directions. So they can turn to the rear and they can fire. Some of them have fixed weaponry in the rear of their vehicles. So the fire comes out of the back and fire comes out of the front of the mouth. Again, John is describing as best he can in his terms what it is that he is seeing taking place in this vision as this Oriental army, this Chinese army moves forward. Now, keep in mind, as I mentioned last week, that the, some of the major saber rattling is taking place in the earth today is coming out of China. They are threatening to take over. Of course, they want to take Hong Kong back. They want, they're threatening to take over Taiwan. They have threatened to attack Japan. Okay. And so you see how they could possibly uh, overtake all of those, particularly where the United States is in its current state uh, 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 in the, on the world scene right, because of uh, what has taken place in Afghanistan. And keep this in mind as well. Afghanistan has already declared that they are a partner with China. And that's very important as we, as, as I kind of detail the route or the possible route that they will take going into with a mechanized army going into uh, the Valley of Elah for the Battle of Armageddon. So we see his description here, okay? And notice that it's going to be a third part of men that are going to be killed. So, now, you're not going to find men, this is pointing to a mechanized trip, a trip over land, an overland journey, because you're not going to find men on the ocean, on the sea, not a third part. You're not going to find them in the air. Where would you find that many people? You're going to find them on land. And so when you take a good look at the at that area of the world, and you see where, where, where Beijing is, and you would kind of consider that the headquarters, and so you would begin to look at a route that they would take. Well, where is it going to be a great concentration of people? It's going to be as they go south, okay? And as they go south, they will find themselves moving across uh, the land, okay? And they will uh, go into India, you see Pakistan, 
before they get to Afghanistan, which at this point in time in history has declared that they are partners with China. Okay, so as they move through India and Pakistan, which they have, which they do not have good relations with in today's society, that's a good, that's an important point to recognize that China does not have great relations uh, relations with India nor with Pakistan. Okay, and so as they come through, anything that's in their way, it's going to be basically an invasion. First of all, of India. So if China invades India then India is going to put up a fight. But the Chinese army is going to march right through. When they get to Pakistan, Pakistan is just, got, just not going to let them come in. There is going to be a fight. And so you see how a third part of men are going to be slain as this Chinese army fights its way all the way across uh, this region of the earth in order to get to the Valley of Elah just outside of Jerusalem. Now, interesting thing is that we need to go over here to take a look at verse at chapter 16 in Revelation. As we come back to chapter uh, 9 in a moment. Let's take a, take a look at, at uh, chapter 16 in verse 12. And it says here, The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So as they take this route, coming in through India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, they would then come to Iran and Iraq before they would actually get to uh, Jerusalem. But notice that the way that the Euphrates River, which is a river which would stand in the way of their mechanized army from traveling into, actually into Jerusalem and into the valley of, of Elah is going to be dried up. Okay. Look at verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and the mouth of the false prophet. So the false prophet, of course, is on the scene as well during this time because this march is in the last three and a half years. And it takes them a year. So we're talking about the very last year of the seven year period that this march takes place with China. They are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of, the, of that great day of God Almighty. See, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed, blessed is he that, that watcheth and keepeth his garments, let, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Look at verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. So that's Armageddon, the last day battle. Now, when we go back to Revelation chapter 9, we see in the very first 15, in verse 15, it says that they are prepared for an hour. In other words, it's going to take them a year or 13 months, a year, a month, a day, a week and a day for a battle that's going to last an hour. Because in, I don't want to get too much into the Battle of Armageddon. I'll just leave it right there. That the battle is going to last exactly one hour. Okay? And once we get to looking at that Battle of Armageddon, you will understand why. And you will see why. Praise God. Let's get back to Revelation chapter 9. Okay? Now, let's uh, take a look at verse 20. It says, For the rest of men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Now, this is very important to understand. The Chinese army is going to move forward. They're going to be wreaking havoc, death and destruction and mayhem as they travel all the way across from China through into uh, the Valley of Elia. Now, again, the probable route is that they would go into India, they would go into Pakistan, they would have resistance, they will be warring and fighting all the way through. They would get to Afghanistan, who again, as I said before earlier, uh, have already declared themselves to be a partner with China. Now, whether that partnership lasts, uh, I don't know. You know, we don't know, praise the Lord. But as of right now, they are partners. In other words, they have relations. 
Now, those relations may not necessarily call, allow them to just walk into Afghanistan uh, at their will. And if those things change, then China will fight its way through Afghanistan, wreaking havoc, destruction, and carnage. A third part of men shall be slain in this battle. So it's going to be a terrible, bloody battle all the way through. Now, watch this. When they get to the next country, on the map is going to be Iran and then Iraq. Now, they're going to have really not much resistance coming through that area because of the Psalm 83 war and the World War III has decimated all of those armies. We talked about that with uh, those battles. We talked about those battles already. They're going to be decimated already. Okay, We already know Iran is wiped out because they banded with Turkey and with Russia to attack Israel. World War III, right after the rapture of the church took place, shortly thereafter, okay? The Psalm 83 war, which probably takes place a little bit prior to the World War III, when, when the, and, kill, and, and looking at what's taking place in the earth right now because of, of what is taking place in Afghanistan and the Taliban, of now ruling Afghanistan, ISIS and Al-Qaeda running free and running wild in Afghanistan, killing Christians all over the place, even as we speak, as the time of this broadcast, um, then we should, we understand that it's going to be, that they're going to actually try to move on Israel, and Israel will take out all of those nations, of those people groupings, Syria and all of them, Damascus destroyed, all of these things, which we detailed some time ago with the Psalm 83 war, when we dealt with that. Now, so when you get to Iran and Iraq, it's going to be a little resistance for the Chinese army, okay? So they will continue to march through, and whatever is there, whatever amount of resistance they do are fine, they're going to just run right through it. It's not going to be a big issue, not going to be a problem for them. They will have pretty much clear sailing getting into the valley of Ea, uh, valley of Ea, the valley of Elah, in order to get set up for this last day battle. Now they think they're coming to battle the Antichrist armies, but like I said, we'll get to that battle when we get to the last day events. A lot of things take place on that particular day. All right, so this is an overland trek in which they're going to destroy a third part of men. Now. Look at verse 20 again. It says, now the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, okay, this is part of the plague. This battle, is this warring and this move of the Chinese army is part of the trumpet judgments. This is the second woe. So this is part of the plagues that are unleashed on the earth. It says, they repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Now, this gives you insight into what the people of the planet are going to be into. There's going to be a lot of devil worship, a lot of idol worship, okay, going on in the earth at this time, praise the Lord. Then when you look at verse 21, it, it gives you uh, four major categories of godlessness that are going to be taking place during the tribulation. Always keep in mind that when these uh, seals are open, and then when these uh, when the seals are open, that the four horsemen are riding through the entire seven year period. So they're continuing to go. When the trumpets are blown, the events that are unleashed because of the trumpet soundings, those things are going to continue as we go forward. As a matter of fact, when you get to the bile judgments or the bowl judgments, you will see an increase of the effect of what took place when the trumpets were initially uh, blown. So we'll get to those vile judgments in a little while, okay? Verse 21 says, Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So this is going to tell you the condition of the earth. Now, when you look at these conditions, you will see that a lot of this is falling into place right now. Okay? Murder. No regard of life or for life. 
You have rampant abortion taking place all around the world, okay? You have murders and people dying and killing each other all over the place, okay? That's what's taking place now. It's not a day go by in any, in any major city, particularly here in the United States, and I'm sure across the world as well, where you're not seeing uh, people being killed or murdered and things of that nature, okay? Then there's sorcerer, sorcery, and that is spiritual control of the mind. And it's usually done through enchantments and drugs, the spirit of pharmakia. That's where we get the word pharmakia from. The Greek word here for sorceries is pharmakia. And it lines up and moves into the area of witchcraft. So witchcraft and sorcery is pharmakia. That sound familiar? Pharmacy, the drugstore. So it's talking about drugs. So drugs will be something that is rampant in the earth, just like it is right now. But it's going to be even more so. And think about this. What is it that the world is, 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 is trying to be mandated to take? A drug. Right, trying to is being uh, coerced really into taking a quote unquote vaccine which had not been tested, had been rushed through. All right, and at the same time, in many in many nations, particularly in the Western world, right, remedies for the COVID nineteen are being squelched and and shut down and not talked about and not reported on. There are natural remedies, right, which will get folk who have COVID who are sick, get them healed and healthy back within two, three days to a week, all in order to push this vaccine on the world population. Sorcery, witchcraft, all right? Now, notice again it says, their fornications and thefts. People have no regard for personal property, they will have no regard for their own person. This fornication will be rampant in these last days, praise God. And so he's talking about how, how bad it's going to be in this day and time when these events take place. But we can see where we are right now that these things are moving in that direction. A lot of people think it's bad now. Well, it's not as bad as it's going to be. Glory to God. Amen. It's going to be terrible. You do not want to be here. And there is a way of escape that God has given all mankind. And that way is Jesus. You have a blessed and wonderful day. And remember, have a daily expectation and a preparation for his appearing. Thank you.